my challenge to teach today is a topic on why we as human sometimes quit. Quit. What, why quitting is become, it's been an issue from the day human, human was created. We quit. We quit. Why? The reason I wanted to go get this challenge to understand from God's perspective, why we as human being quit things, quit people, quit relationships, quit programs, quit this, quit that. And what is God's remedy in, 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 ask, in having us not quitting things? Quitting, stopping something is easy. Why? Because there is a opposite of quitting is progression. Amen? Opposite of quitting is progression. Where there is progression, there is always, there is always a power to find favor through the progression. Our strength is grown through progression. Agree? Our strength is grown through our progression. The more we progress into something, we are learning not only ourselves, we are growing a talent that we never thought we would have. It's creating a assurance, confidence, in progressing in something, in that something gives me the joy of, gives me the joy of to, to trust what I'm going through is giving me not only the joy, not only the strength, it's, not, it's also giving me favor I desire. Why? Progression is always about faithfulness. Amen? Where there's faithfulness, there is reward. Where there is your, the, the, the best part of faithfulness is faithfulness is a trend, faithfulness is, is a trade to favor. Faithfulness, the more I'm faithful to something, trust is applied from the other side. Amen? Faithfulness is a trade. It's a currency. It's a currency to exchange favor. It's a currency to receive authority. Come on, come on, come on. Faithfulness is a currency to exchange authority. That make sense? Because when, when there's faithfulness to something, we are growing strength within ourselves. That means we're growing authority to stop, to stop anything that's coming against us. To give us authority to start something that we want to start from a long time. To, to regain the power that we didn't have 20 years ago, we would be able to do it now. Why? There is, a, there is a presence of faithfulness within ourselves. Amen? Faithfulness is exchange to glory that God wants to give us also. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Moses... Moses was faithful to what he was called for. In return, he gets to have a face-to-face -face encounter. <laughs> Amen? Because he was thinking faithful to what he was called for, God didn't, God didn't have a, not have a chance not to come see him. I mean, I, I don't make sense. He was so, because God, I mean, his faithfulness made God cannot say, you know what, I, I, I never showed myself to anybody. <laughs> I never showed myself to anybody because you stuck, you sticked faithful to my command, even though, even though it was so hard for you. Even though this job that I gave you is the hardest thing in the world. Can you imagine? Taking, taking, it's, it's a bunch of wild ox yeah. to a place where they never thought they could own it. A wild ox 
cannot be trained. So it's, you're carrying Israel as a wild ox to a place that they don't know where they're going to. They don't know what that is, will look like. They're assuming what it will look like, trusting Moses. <laughs> I can only imagine. I cannot, I, I don't know how, I, I mean, I love my kids. This is summer. Oh my goodness. They are a bunch of wild ox too. Can you imagine that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Every single time I have to run around, try to get them to do what, what I like them to do. Instead, I, I, I need to run around to do things that they want to do. The common word in my home is, my home is, I'm bored. They're, they're happy. They're happy to say that. They're very happy. First thing in the morning, they wake up. The first thing in the morning, I'm tired, I'm bored. How are you tired? And how are you, how are you bored of all the things that you already have? You have a cloud on cloud on your above, you have fire in the night, you have food, chicken come to you every single day without you asking for it, without working for it. How in the world you're missing out on being bored rather than being enjoying what you already have? Can you imagine that? Can you imagine Moses being there? Dudes, look at the fire. Enjoy the fire. Enjoy. Look up, look up. You can, we can see things that you never saw. Clouds are following us. Look on your ground. That is dust. This dust should kill you. This, this desert should kill you. Instead, it's, it's, it's giving us a platform to serve God, to do God, to enjoy God. No matter how high you fall, you won't, you won't dive on, on a cement ground rather than on a sand, you know, you know what I mean? You play around, you will not get hurt, I promise you. Look at your clothes, they're not, they're not getting dirty. They're not getting torn. Your shoes, look at your shoes, it's 10 years, I mean, I can understand. Oh my goodness, I can understand. Yeah. I can understand, uh, I don't know. Anyways, I don't know how many clothes in America. I mean, it's just, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, let's not go to the clothes point. Um, <laughs> closets, it's two closets. Man and woman is like a two different closets. Beautiful closets. Unless it is full, it's not closet. It's so sneaky full. So the point is, I mean, it, it, it's just, it's just for, for, for Moses to lead them, to lead them was impossible task. But because, because Moses agreed to a challenge that he never had, the challenge, the experience he never had before. Can you imagine that? He never had experience to lead anything. He learned something in Israel. He, sorry, in Egypt. He learned architect. He was good in architect. He was not good in leader because he was never promised to be a king. He was the wrong person in the wrong place. And the wrong place made him, see the, made him see that he is wrong and he escaped from the wrong place, not having the talent that he needed to have. Now God says, you are the leader now. He never had a practice to lead anything. He was leading sheep. They were easy for them. Sheep love food. Sheep love security. So, 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 so to me, when he saw the challenge, he saw a burden. Come on, guys. When he saw the challenge, he saw a burden. But in spite of the burden, he said, Lord, I'm going to take up this challenge. I'm going to take up this challenge. As long as you're with me, I'm going to take it. So when he took the challenge, God applied the challenge with faithfulness. Amen? Every challenge comes with a gift called presence of God. Every challenge comes with the presence of God because God will never give you something without his presence. Amen? 
God will always give us the challenge with his presence. If we don't see the presence, you're missing out what you can exchange from. No, no, I want you to hear me, guys. Come on. If you don't see challenge by given by God, you're missing out the challenge to trade for his face. You want to see his face? Pick up a challenge. You want to see if his face? Pick up what God is trying to do to tell you to what to do and say, okay, I'm picking up a challenge, God. You have no choice but to see me. Every challenge that God's given me is an opportunity to see him. It's a sneaky way for God to say, I want to I show myself to you, Ravi. But pick up my challenge. I want to show you who I am. I want to show you who I am. But love, feed my, feed my sheep. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Remember when John, when, 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 when Jesus was talking to his disciples, and when after he died and grows back again, he came to see them while they were doing things that they shouldn't be doing, called going, going back to what, what Jesus called them from. They went back to fishing. They went back to things that God escaped them from. They pulled him from. When God pulled him, them from, they went back to what they thought feel secure. So when they went back, instead of being faithful, God shows up and says, all right, I'm going to give you what you didn't catch, even though you went back. I'm going to give you fish. I'm going to give you, sec- I'm going to give you some things to show that y- what you do is, uh, whatever you're going to do without my presence, you won't do anything without my presence. You will catch the fish. You will find the fish, even though you're trying to escape. You're tr- even though you're trying to do things that you're not supposed to, you're escaping. But you, you're, you're escaping, but you're still catching. But you're trying to catch something in the escape place. I make it sense? You're c- trying to catch something in the escape place. When you're escaping, you will never find anything because escape is disobedience. You'll only tarry, you'll only use your energy and waste your energy. Escape is being secure in the wrong place. I'm preaching better than you're listening to me. I make a sense. That's a good English, actually. Isn't that, isn't that a good word? Good English? I, I put it together. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, and it's crazy how, how escape takes away my energy and remind me that I'm empty in the, in the escape. And we question God, where are you now? We blame him because we want to see God, but we're escaping. But we not, we're not seeing that we put ourselves there and try to escape and trying to catch something from our escape and try to figure out where God is, God will never be in a place of escape. Rather, he'll be somewhere else called provision. God will never come into the boat of your escape. Am I talking to somebody? Maybe I'm just talking to the camera. Am I making sense? He will never be in the escape. Why? Escape is unbelief. Escape is you, you, your exact, I mean, what I said just, just a few, few minutes back, escape is burden. For trying, uh, escape is your control over circumstances. You wanting to have, are you ready? You escaping the, the biggest, the biggest, here's the, here's the secret, the biggest reason for people to quit. You want to know? I was shocked when God said, there are two secrets here. Number one is convenience. Convenience is what makes us go after to what I know rather be faithful what has been given to me. F- 
Faithfulness is a currency to be exchanged for us to see God, not for us to see the darker world that would, that would not only punish us, that not, not only see, come on, I'm making sense, guys. Escape will see my insecurity. Escape will see my in, insufficiency. Escape will show, show me my dark side of the world. But when I'm faithful, I see, the, I see something that I never saw who I am. <laughs> Why? Faithfulness is shining God on me. Come on, guys. Come on, come on, come on. Faithfulness is shining God on me. The more, I sh- the more I'm looking for faithfulness, the more I'm shined by the light that God has given to me. Come on. Because Jesus is the light. He is not ignorance. The darkness is ignorance. Escape is ignorance. Remember that? Darkness is ignorance. When we are in the light, we are, we are acknowledging the knowledge that God's given to me. Light, light always shines on information that surprisingly connects to passion. <laughs> Come on, guys. Faithfulness is authority. Amen? So when I'm in the unfaithfulness, I become a follower, not a leader. I follow what I used to know. But when Jesus calls me into the light, he is baking breakfast without me cooking for a breakfast. Amen. Good job. Yeah, I like the breakfast part. Kids love it. My point is, my point is, Jesus, in my faithfulness, he's cooking something that I would never cook for myself. Come on. He'll not only give me hundred and f- uh, the, 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 the hundredfold just by listening to him in the boat and saying, from the shore, Jesus saying, guys, throw your net on the other side. Remember the story? Last time we talked about it. Throw your net on the other side. Disciples l- listen to that, listen to that noise and say, hold on a minute. Somebody, I recognize who that is. I, I, I recognize, and the first time when Jesus called my name and said, throw your net, he's sitting with me. He was sitting with me and, and he's, 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 come on, come on, come on, come on. He's giving me instructions where to throw my net. He challenged me to go back to where I suffered. He challenges me to go back to where I suffered and use the same net which was disappointed, use the same concept that I used to use and use that as a testimony, not as a burden. So what does that mean? The same voice calls up now, the same voice is not in the boat. The same voice is in the seashore Telling them, guys, throw your net on the other side. (laughs) Guys, faithfulness always tells us his strategy. Even though we're on the wrong side, he'll always say, he's always faithful in our escape to say, "I I have a strategy in your escape. If you listen to me, you'll catch fish. You will catch things. You will have things that you never thought you would have. It's fascinating that when, when, when the disciples heard that Jesus voice, the first person who ran, ran to Jesus jumped into the sea. Jumped into the sea and said, I want to go see. I know this voice. I know this voice. This voice is my Jesus. This voice is my God. Why in the world? I am shameful. Why in the world? I am here waiting, waiting for my boat to take me. I'm going to jump in. Forget what I caught. Guys, faithfulness is love. Faithfulness is not opposite of security. Convenience 
can be a security. I had a story. We have a story in uh, in the Bible in Genesis chapter 19. Uh, 19. We don't have to go there, but uh, if you have a chance to read that story, there's a fascinating story. A, 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 a challenge between God and Elijah. There's a, there used to be a prophet in the Bible called Elijah. He's the craziest guy ever. The most stubborn prophet you can ever get. He will never listen to anybody. He is the guy who wanders places that nobody can wander to. He, he's the guy who, who, who's, wherever he went, people had to listen to him and, 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 and be cherished by what he had to say. He had so much of connections with God that whatever he says, heavens agreed. Heaven, heaven got agreed to whatever Elijah had to say. Elijah walked with authority. Elijah walked with so much of respect. Why? The first I understood what Elijah carried is faithfulness. The government told him, told the nation to bow to the Baal. The government told, told the nation to do things exactly how they did. The government corrupted the nation through control. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Convenience can control us. Convenience can control, can control us to bow down to things that we should not be bowing down to. It's not we want convenience, but circumstances chooses us to control, be controlled by convenience. The, the government controlled the people, but Elijah was controlled by faithfulness. Amen? Elijah was controlled by faithfulness. The more he was controlled by faithfulness, heaven couldn't stop saying, not saying no to Elijah. <laughs> no, amen. Good job, guys. Am I going to make sense? Elijah, God couldn't stop. God couldn't even say no to Elijah. Every time he goes to, every time he got angry on a kingdom, he goes to a kingdom and he says, dudes, you are wrong. I'm, you're not going to have three years worth. You don't want have, you won't have rain for three years. God didn't tell him to do that. God didn't tell him to say, I want you to go to uh, uh, the, the Mount Carmel and bring all the 450 prophets together and tease them to bring down heaven, to bring down uh, fire from heaven. Tease them. God never told him to do the drama. He, he challenged 450 prophets of Baal and saying, okay, we'll take a challenge. The challenge is, let me see whose God will listen to you. <laughs> whose God will listen to you? Would my God listen to me or your God listen to me? He already said it. Whose God will listen to you? Amen. Whose God will listen to you? Well, they, they, they started in the morning. They all said, oh, they are, my God will listen to me. Oh, my God, my, my God will listen to me. My convenience will listen to me. I know because where two, where, where two or three gather, he will listen to me. The problem is where two or three gather in convenience, nothing. You are not waking up anything. Because you are worshipping a convenience, not, not, not authority of God. Authority of God gives you, uh, today I'm going to, uh, I pray to God, Lord, I'm not going to sweat today. Yeah, yeah, amen, amen, amen. I, I won't tell you the secret why I sweat, I'll tell you later, someday, someday. Uh, maybe I'll tell now. You know, so, so the point is, the point I'm trying to say is, they, all, they started the day with so much of convenience and say, we are all together. If, if, I'm, if this guy, if God is not listening to this, Baal God is not listening to this guy, he will listen to this guy's prayer. If that guy's prayer is not listening, 
this guy said, there are 450 prophets. Someone should, someone's voice this God would listen to. Come on. What I understood is, they all day they prayed. Elijah teased them. Maybe those guys are sleeping. Maybe they're chit-chatting with someone else. Maybe you're trying to, uh, trying to worship in the wrong place. Worship in the right place. He, he said, I mean, he could he teased everything that he could have done. Nothing happened. No, no weapons came down. No fire came down. Then his turn came. His turn came. Come on, let's say, everybody say his turn. His turn came. Elijah's turn came. The first thing he did is, I'm going to challenge the natural. I'm going to challenge the natural. I want you to take in a bunch of seven, nine barrel of water or something like that. Huge. One barrel is enough of water to be soaked on the altar of God. He, he made everybody soak that altar with water. <laughs> All he did is he looked up and said, Jesus, you know I'm a stinker. He didn't say that. You know, I am your servant, right? Yes, I'm your servant. That's right. I'm your servant. I, you consider me as your servant. You consider me as your son. If I am your son. Remember? We are a new covenant. We are no more servants, nor friends, but we are kids. Looked up and said, I am your son. I know the access points. I know your trigger points. I know God, your trigger points. Your trigger points is watch me having what you have in me. What God has is faithfulness. <laughs> When, he sh when, when I call, he has to see what I carry. Come on, come on, come on, come on. When I, when I call, you're letting God to see what you carry. Am I making sense? Am I preaching something? When, he's, when I call him, he has to see something in me to show up to what I ask, I'm asking for. He first sees what I see, what I carry. If he doesn't see what I carry, he will not show up to what he carries. What he carries, that is his expectation in me. And that's when he's carrying me. That's when he shows up. So what he saw in Elijah, when I saw him, when he calls him, he saw his faithfulness against the challenge. <laughs> he challenged the protocol. He challenged the protocol. He challenged the un unnatural. When he called up and said, Jesus, I'm calling you. You said, call me, I'll show you great and mighty things. God says, you know what? I see. I see my face on you. I see my practice in you. <laughs> Amen? I see my practice. Practice without Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I see practice that is married to principles. <laughs> you can serve God with the practice. Every Sunday I come to church because Ravi is there. Every Sunday I come to church exactly 10 o'clock because God is there. Not 10, 15. I'm just kidding. I don't know how. I'm just, I'm just kidding. It is fascinating how God loves faithfulness. How God loves grace in the faithfulness. Come on, guys. The point I'm going after is, what did I say? What, where did I left? What was the point? Not before. <laughs> after <laughs> being on time. Okay, that's good. That's, that's, uh, he told me to tell you this. Uh, I'm going to blame Ron. Practice principles. When you listen to God, when you listen to God, you always have principles attached to what He's saying. 
Carefully, carefully listen to me. When you're listening to God, you're listening to principles also by what he's saying. He's saying, come to me with thanksgiving. That's a principle. Don't come with me. He didn't say, he didn't say, come to me in worry. He says, come to me in, in thanksgiving. Principle. Practice me. But practice principle. Practice becomes joy. Practice doesn't become fear. See, convenience likes to see fear. When there is fear, there is security. But when there is love, there is opportunities that you can do. You, you, opportunity called freedom. You can do anything and everything around you because you have freedom. Come on, guys. So when there is practice of principles of what God is trying to say. So when you're hearing God, you're looking to God and say, Daddy, I know you're talking to me. What's the principle today? What are the principles that I need to abide in? Am I speaking to, am I speaking to anybody? Guys, if, I, if I'm speaking to African-American church, they'll be on, on, their, uh, on their feet right now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Amen. Amen. Am I, I, I making sense to you all? Practice principles is what makes peace come in into my heart where you'll never sweat again. Almost, I'm just saying that now. You're preaching, you're teaching, you're practicing. The absence of practicing principles is nervousness. Whoo! I said it. Come on, guys. You will never find joy out of nervousness. Nervousness, convenience, always answers the question of what if. Say it again. What did I say? <laughs> what if? Oh, I like that. Good job, Robbie. And always answers the question of what if or I, I, it's crazy. Because what if, what if is a place where you're seeing yourself that you are not capable. You're not worthy. You don't have permission. You don't have joy. You don't know what you have. You're not, you don't have enough. Elijah looked at, up, up, up on God and said, If I am your servant, Lord, let the fire, let the fire come upon this, this, this thing. The water soaked. Water soaked, burnt off, water soaked offering. What fell was not fire. Just so you know. Natural fire cannot burn an altar. Have you noticed it? Natural fire won't burn, won't burn an altar. This was something different kind of fire. <laughs> Whew. This is so, there was so different kind of fire that, that 450 prophets were, 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 were the testimony to see the fire which is different than anyone else, any, anything else. Guys, faithfulness shows up, tells us, shows us things totally different than the natural ability. Faithfulness lives out of supernatural. Amen? Convenience looks to see what others are saying. It's not only questions what if. What if I die? What if this happens? What if that happens? It always the questions, question of what, what you don't have or what you might lose. So the point of this question is, I, 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 the first thing that God says in this, in, this, in, this, uh, in this story, in this story, the Lord is asking Elijah, the, as soon as he finishes the, that drama, he comes back, he kills 450 prophets after he teases them. He kills them all. 
Elijah kills 450 people who he teased them. I'm not only teasing you, I'm going to kill you too, just so you know. Yeah, let's not practice that now. If we are New Testament people now, let's not kill our enemies. So uh, I'm telling to somebody, some they should listen to. But the point is, we cannot kill a lot of New Testament people. We are new, I mean, that's, that's the whole thing. We can kill sometimes. But the point is, <laughs> the point I'm trying to say is, he killed all the people that, that, that he came against, the people who came against them. His motivation was, see something different than what you saw before. If you still don't believe, you'll be killed. Come on. Israel, who came out of unbelief, or came out of Egypt, were killed before they could enter the promised land. Why? They came from unbelief to, to anger. Unbelief to, to expectation. No, no, convenience expects. Sometimes expects. What does that mean? What does that mean? Expectation is what I had before, I want it now. Why is it what I had before not working for me now? How can I not use that in this new world? The problem here is you're transitioning. Convenience is attacked. Attacked when things are not working the way it used to be. Am I making sense? I'm going the message now. Uh, I'm, I'm almost done now. I'm already done. The point I'm going after is, when, you are when faith is attacked, when faith is attacked in your life, when you go into convenience, God is saying, I have something to offer called faith in you. Opposite of convenience is faith. Everybody say faith. Opposite of convenience is faith. When you don't see faith in your convenience, you're trying to figure out what to bring in the first stage to the second stage of your life. You're still, you're still transitioning. You're not settled. If you're using convenience, you're still, you're still transitioning from old to new. That means you're still staying in the old. Convenience is staying in the old nature, not in the new nature. Oh, I finished. We can all go home today. Come on, guys. If you're transitioning from old to new and you're struggling how this is working to this, you're still stuck in the old nature, not in New Testament. God is saying, repair, repent, repair, repent. For what you were to where you go, going needs to heal your convenience, not your old times. He said, look, he, this, this guy, the Elijah, when he did that drama, he ran to the mountain, he ran to the uh, tree, he ran to a tree and ran away from, because Jezebel, 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 Jezebel looked at him and uh, sent a word saying, today, tomorrow, by this time, I'll go kill you because you killed my people. The guy who had so much of power, now he's afraid of one woman who's trying to attack him. And now he's, he's running away from this girl. The reason he's running away from this girl is he got scared from convenience. He looked at his conveniences. She's going to take away all my convenience. He went to God and he, even in twice, thrice he said. He, three times he looked at God and says, God, all my convenience is taken away. They killed, they killed my, my, my people. They killed my prophets. They killed my, taken away my provision. They did everything that I, I owned. They took away all my provision. Sometimes, sometimes convenience lies provision. Whew. Convenience lies, lies to us. That's when God says, you're lying to yourself, Elijah. The first thing that God says, I, 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 because convenience, sometimes we go to convenience. Here's the answer. Sometimes we go to convenience is because 
our faith is fatigued. Sometimes our we go to run to what did, what did he say? How did he say? Sometimes you get a convenience because your faith is fatigued. Ooh, your faith is fatigued. As much as compassion is fatigued, there's compassion fatigue in psychology. Faith is also fatigued. A man who likes to war consistently, <laughs> their faith is used consistently also. We men, we women who like to fight, who, who like to win, who like to possess, you're using faith. You're not using fear. The more you use fear, you're using, so you, the more you're using fear, Faith, you fight. You're recommended to fight by using faith. By faith, you own this. By faith, you do this. By faith, you do this. All that you're going to do is faith. But Elijah was fatigued because he knew, he knew that just by, he didn't know, but, but just by this one lady, uh, uh, just, just by this lady, uh, what trashed him, he got scared. What does that mean? The first thing that God did, he looked at Elijah, he was sleeping under, under a tree. He looked and he sent his, sent his angel, I believe it's a Jesus. He sent his angel, looked, wake him up, woke him up, woke him up and said, uh, Elijah, wake up. Elijah, wake up, please, wake up. Here's the point. You're escaping from this thing. You're escaping from fear of death. I'm waking up so that you can eat and drink. Listen to me, please. Eli, the angel did twice. He was so scared. He was so scared. Are you ready? In the fatigue, he used the word, it is enough. It is enough. Take me home. When you know you're burdened, that means your faith is fatigued. Its faith is now fatigued. But your love to God is fatigued. That make sense? So when your love is fatigued, the first thing God lets you do is deep sleep. Rest is a command from God. Twice he did. He, 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 he made Elijah sleep. <laughs> Elijah sleep. Eat my food. I have given you food. Supernatural food. Eat. My son don't like to eat now. He's, he's, he's old now. Uh, I'm just kidding. Um, but, but, but he wants to eat. He, 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 he ate. He slept. Second time the angel shows up. Wakes him up and says, Elijah, you need to eat. Drink. Go back to sleep. Twice. Twice. He did that. Second time he did that. Second time he did that. Eat and drink. Your journey is going to be greater. Are you ready? Your journey is going to be greater. Eat this and drink. After he finished eating, he did 40 days, 40 nights travel with one food. Am I making sense? When you rest in God, your fatigueness increases, your love increases to God, where you will not see your convenience as an attempt to go to. Your love to God grows love. Come on. What you need is love, not fear. Your love always connects to faith. Amen? So the first thing that goes after it, the, 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 just, just, I'll, I'll finish here. I don't want to go deep. The, the point of the, what, what God looks at is, so he had 40 days, 40 nights, strength that he had over the love of God. So when he had love, he had 40 days and 40 nights, strength, 40 days and 40 nights, strength. Now, he used the 40 days and 40 nights, strength, are you ready? He goes to a cave. Elijah goes to a cave. He goes to a cave. Prof uh, convenience is preferences. Right? It's preferences. It's what is important to me. Convenience doesn't remind you your responsibility. It reminds you what you lost. But... But God reminds you and says, he looks at, looks at Elijah, Elijah and says, dude, what are you doing here? God questions Elijah. 
Can you imagine that? God questions Elijah, what, what are you doing here? What are you doing in the city? What are you doing hiding in the cave? You're sub- sub- twice he answers, questions the answer. I, I, I want to dig in this so much deeper. Maybe Tuesday I'll dig it more deeper. What in the world are you doing in this cave? In your preferences. It tells me what is important to you rather than my work. If you love me, you will feed my sheep. If you love me, you'll write the books. You love me, you'll go after what God has for me. You love me, you'll plant. You love me, you will do this. You love me, you'll do that because your works is not tearing. Your works is out of love. Disobedience hides away faithfulness. Amen? But faithfulness gives you... Are you ready? Good job. Faithfulness gives you the power to anoint everybody. Anoint people of God. Faithfulness opens your eyes to see what God is anointed. Faithfulness shows you who's your friends. Come on, guys. You all stand. That's a good place to stop. Praise the Lord. I'm not sweaty. Almost gone there. I don't have nervousness. Amen? Amen. Because I prepared this since, 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 since Friday. So, Come on, guys. I want to see Jesus visit us. Your faithfulness to God takes away two things. Two things. The biggest thing that I like to see uh, what faithfulness does is it takes away the power to seek after, seek after what I crave rather than what he craves. I become the lover of God to see what he is working around so I can join him. Faithfulness will never join to work around followers. Faithfulness always works around leaders. Leaders will always work around authority. Amen? I'm so happy in this season we are all growing. I know you guys are growing too. Don't call me, otherwise I'll... I'll, uh, I'll uh, I'll, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to steal you to Atlanta. Um, but, uh, but, but the point of this is today, God is reminding us, what is our preferences? Is, that, is my preferences towards what, what, what I hear from somebody? What I see from what I'm not receiving? Or... Is my faithfulness connected to God knowing that we're going to have plenty? Because the promise for this year is what? For RBC. Remember? What's that? Fruitfulness. Remember that? Abundance and fruitfulness. A promise for RBC this year is fruitfulness. I, I, sometimes I don't like fruitfulness because it's a challenge. I posted, first time in my life, I posted something about this church. I know when I post something for something that is growing, people will see it as they'll attack me guaranteed. I never thought America will attack me. Oh my goodness, they attacked me. The first, the first, the first, the first ad attacked me saying, this looks like, uh, uh, whatever that word is, cult. Oh, this looks like a cult. Another another person who's not, who's also a cult, she's attacking him. That's a whole world that I even, didn't want to go. But it preferences, it preferences is hiding away in the little, not for more. Faithfulness is gathering more. Amen? Faithful is looking for more. You look at, look at Carla, she's never happy with a little, little bit of flowers. Her house has to be filled with flowers. Why? The more full it is, the more she can, she can host. Amen? 
the more love you have, the more hosting, hosting you can do. Faithfulness is hosting for more. Amen? Let's close your eyes. Jesus, we come before you today. We know our spirits got what needs to be healed today. The biggest enemy is inner me. Heal my inner me. Jesus, Elijah said three things. Same, same thing again and again. I am not enough. I was killed. I was, uh, my people were killed. All my provisions were taken. Three times he came against you, God. But instead of you going, instead of telling him, I'm going to kill Jezebel, you gave him responsibility. <laughs> you gave him responsibility. To go anoint the next three kings. You gave him responsibility. The answer for this, for, for unfaithfulness, is responsibility. Jesus, thank you for giving us all responsibilities. That we are so, we, we are so grateful for all the responsibility given to us. We know out of this responsibility, you're going to trade. You're going to trade us authority. Jesus, today, we want to trade our faithfulness to see you today. We want to see you how you want to show up. Then I, if there's anybody who's empty of, uh, empty in their, in, their, in their mind, in their soul without you, Jesus, I ask that you come fill them up with your presence today. Fill them up with your presence, Daddy. Quitting is for unbelief. Faithfulness is exchange for challenges that you have for us. We want to be Moses. We want to be, we want to be you, Jesus. Jesus, as we go into the world from today, I ask that you would give us the exchange, every day exchange. Every day we would exchange your face to realities. I repeat this, Daddy. As we get into the world today, we exchange our faithful to your to, to your face. We pray that we, whatever we exchange to, we experience your face. Amen? We exchange your face today. We exchange our face to our kids. We exchange our faithfulness to our, our peers. We exchange our faithfulness to money. We exchange faithfulness to, come on, your face hidden in everything that we're going to experience. Thank you, Nana, for this promise that you've given to us that you're going to exchange your face to us through faithfulness. We bless your name, Nana. We look forward to hear you more this week about this. In Jesus' daddy's name, anyone who's going to know that you're going to experience his face, say out loud, Amen. Amen.